Hello princesses and welcome back to Not Fit for Print Beauty with me, Rebecca. I'm very excited today because we are premiering a new series here on Not Fit for Print Beauty and the series is called Beauty Basics. This series aims to answer and discuss some common questions and confusion within the beauty industry. This first episode comes to us through a suggestion from a very valued member of our community here, Deb. Deb asked me, Rebecca, what is the definitive difference between setting powder and finishing powder? It's a common question, and there's times that the lines blur. So today on Beauty Basics, that is going to be the first issue we tackle. I have a few other plans for the future that I will tell you about at the end, and I would love to hear your suggestions for future in the series as well. By the way, this is not meant to speak down to anyone. This will answer questions for those of you that have them, and those of you that have the knowledge and want to share what you think below with us, I would love that as well. As always, it is a conversation, not just a monologue, I hope. Okay, so let's get started. What in the world is the difference between a setting powder and a finishing powder, and where do those lines, no pun intended, blur? Well, let's start by talking about a setting powder. We're gonna recommend some of my favorite setting powders and finishing powders, and some of the best brushes, in my opinion, your opinion below, that I think that you can work with. Okay, a setting powder is generally, but not always, you know, there's always gonna be a little bit of debate, but generally is a matte powder that is used at the stage when you're putting on makeup where you are still on the complexion phase, okay? So it is used after foundation and concealer has gone on. It can be a vital step for those of you with oilier complexions to kind of keep things a little bit more matte throughout the day and can even be used really for a touch-up even after makeup is on but generally it's at the complexion point. It can help um, kind of mattify also a kind of sticky or tacky foundation that kind of can be uncomfortable. So it's generally used then to set the complexion products before all the pretty colorful stuff goes on. So let's talk about some famous ones. Chanel has a lovely natural finish setting powder. I am holding up the original. Chanel has redone it since then and angered a lot of people, but I know people who also love it and I've linked the new one below. Too hard to find the old one, so I won't use that today. Pat McGrath has some gorgeous ones for under the eye, but you can use them anywhere. A really light one that really brightens under the eye. She's got a more medium tinged kind of one, depending, of course, you'd have to buy it for your skin tone. And even this one, which has a little bit of yellow in it, is great for covering up red around the nose. It doesn't have to just be used around the eyes. This, this is linked below too, and it's a super, super popular setting powder. Our um, most famous setting powder, and this one ranked number one by a landslide in my favorite products for 2021, the products you used the most last year, and that, of course, is the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Setting Powder. This product causes a lot of confusion because, gosh darn it, it's a setting powder that she named Flawless Finish. It has the word finish in it confuses the heck out of people. I don't blame you. It is a setting powder. It's really not any sort of a traditional finishing powder. I guess what she means is it finishes the complexion products well. I have shade one because I like the lighter shade for under the eyes, so that's really light for me, but it's nice. And then I have, for the rest of my face, shade two. They're generally translucent and, like I said, oftentimes matte. Now, some people like a little bit of a reflective or shining quality to their setting powder because under the eye that can blur a little bit. So there's no rule that it has to be matte. Now, we're going to talk about brushes, but I do have to tell you that, like I said, if you do have an oilier complexion, this might be a vital step for you. But... If you have a normal or certainly dry complexion, you might skip a setting powder altogether. It does help the makeup stay in place a little bit more, the complexion products stay in place and last through the day. But if you are in a hurry, I, I have to admit, it's one I often skip myself. Okay, so let's talk about some of the brushes I recommend. So setting we know, 
is basically for setting the complexion products, keeping them looking matte, keeping them in place all day, extending their wear. I prefer a more matte finish, not a kind of glistening or sparkly finish, although some do like that under the eyes to blur. I like to keep it nice and matte. So here are three brushes that I just kind of recommend. I love the Sonia G Detail Brush uh, from her Lotus Collection that is currently not available on Beautylist, but I linked it so you can get on the wait list because it will be coming back. And basically, it, it's great for under the eyes. Look at that. Um, I also love the Wayne Goss number three brush. This is really nice for under the eyes, but also because it's flexible, it'll kind of finish any set, I should say, any of your base products. And I love the Inochigo from uh, Sonia G is a great powder brush as well. Not to mention you can just powder down your entire complexion base with something like this gorgeous La Mer powder brush. Really, really, really famous and really beautiful. This is not natural hair, it's synthetic, but it's just lovely and it will apply powder all over. The, the brush that you choose for setting versus finishing is actually kind of important. So let me just kind of show you this. I have my makeup on, so this isn't really the right time to do this, but taking the Wayne Goss brush, let's take a look at this yellow powder. This is a nice matte powder and I can put it here and it will kind of blur any of that redness that I get around my nose. You can put this in your bag and use it during the day, or if you find that anything is starting to get, especially if you have an oily complexion, you can pop one of these in and get it under your eyes, things like that. It kind of finishes the look, keeps things pulled together, but, but really a setting powder is for a complexion product. Okay, so let's move on to what I find the more exciting, and that is a finishing powder. And I'll tell you where these lines uh, might blur a little bit. For me, I like my finishing powder to have a little bit more glitz to it, a little bit more sparkle, and a little bit more fun. Let's start with the brushes for a finishing powder. Whereas a setting powder is for the basics and you know foundations and complexion products, a finishing powder is just as it sounds. It's going to finish your look. So you're gonna actually do it after your full face is on. It's pretty much a last step. It can't, think of it as eliminating any lines and making things seamless. You know how sometimes we're in a rush and we have a highlight, a blush, and a bronze, and it can almost look like, a, what is that, Spumoni ice cream? You know, that, that three layer ice cream in there? Um, what the finishing powder does is make everything look a little bit more seamless, and it makes sure that there's no harshness or delineation among all the pretty products that we put on our face. For that reason, the best way to use a finishing powder is with a kabuki style flat brush so that you can buff it in. And I have a few here. The Sonia, this used to be the face one, now it's called the Buffer Pro from Sonia G, flat top there. Currently not in stock, but I'll tell you what is her Smooth Buffer, which is just kind of the junior little, little version of that, wonderful still is in stock and that's linked below. And I even pulled something like the Refer 31, which is also a great brush for this also. Also a great brush also. Some of my favorite powders, and then I'm gonna show you one in use here. I like for this, the Hourglass Infinity Powder. This is one that a lot of people use to set. Like if you like something with a little bit more glisten or shine, see how that kind of can almost be highlighty. Some people like that under the eyes as a setting powder. For me, I really like the Infinity as a finishing powder because when it pulls everything together, it gives a little bit of sheen to the face, a little bit more life. I love the By Terry Hyaluronic um, powder is fantastic. Um, it can be used also to set, but I love it. It's a loose powder and I love it for finishing because it's got that little bit of a gleam in it. I was just talking about being bored by Laura Mercier, but I'll tell you, her Celestial Light, this was recommended to me by uh, community member Irit, who is a super amazing and talented makeup artist. And she uses this on her clients and herself. And it's just got, it's a loose powder and it's just got such a pretty, kind of a sheen to it. It's just really nice when you buff it in to finish. Oh, it just makes the skin look so perfect. And of course, my absolute favorite, 
and hands down, I think everybody's favorite, the Guerlain Meteorite. It does have a little bit of a kind of a floral smell because Guerlain is, of course, a French perfume house. But I have, a, there's a few different ones. They smell like that um, lavender, is it candy? You know those discs, those candies are like a purple kind of floral candy that you might have had as a child? That's what it smells like to me. So I find it a really nice scent. And here is one of the originals. And then, you know, they come out with special editions. This one is kind of a rosy golden hue. And the way that you apply that, and I'm at the perfect stage now in my makeup for it, I have everything on. And I love when I take this final step. So what I do generally, if I'm using the meteorite, so you can do this with any, I like to just kind of shake it up, get a little bit onto the cap. See there, it's on the cap there. You don't need too much. And I just take my flat kind of kabuki style brush, go in there. Then what you're gonna do, and I'll show you the difference on this side here too, I'm not even using a mirror. I'm just gonna buff, so I'm going over my blush. I'm just gonna do this side of the face. You can go right into the meteorites too if you want. Um, I'm gonna do everything and I'm just going in circular motions. It looks like I'm doing this too quickly, and but I'm not. I'm not being rough on my face either. This brush is so soft. And what this does is it just kind of blends. It doesn't, when you use a buffing motion, you guys, it does not lift the makeup. Certainly shouldn't if you're using the right brush and the right powder. And as you can see, this side has no finishing powder on it. This side does something about it, smooth, light reflecting, and it really, I'm gonna do the other side now so that I match, and it really kind of blurs imperfections and makes the makeup just look so pretty. If you've ever put on a little bit too heavy of a blush, or you just kind of look in the mirror and there's, it seems like there's too much of a delineation, when you take a moment to just kind of use a flat kabuki style brush of your preference, and I like any sort of a powder, even if it's generally meant as a setting powder, but any sort of a powder with a little bit of a reflective quality to it, I think this is a useful step. And if you do skip the setting powder and you add in a finishing powder at the end, you do kind of get that same effect where it helps the makeup last throughout the day and just kind of literally finishes the look with a really pretty kind of reflective look to it. It is my favorite. I do admit to you that I often skip the original setting powder. I don't have oily complexion. I don't really worry about that. But when I've had my makeup done professionally, the makeup artist will always use it and it it does look better. And I, I often also skip the finishing powder because I'm always in a mad rush. But when I stop, it didn't take long as you see, and really buff in a nice finishing powder, boy, I just look a lot more perfected and everybody could use a more perfected look. So that is the basic difference uh, between the two. Uh, again, a setting powder coming in at the complexion stage, to keep things matte and keep things in place. Generally, a matte is preferred, but if you like a little bit of razzle-dazzle, maybe under the eyes to conceal a little bit, I would understand that. And then, of course, a finishing powder, the last step in your routine, unless you're gonna spritz your face, then it would be the next to last step. And for that, I prefer a little bit more of a tiny little bit of sparkle to it, and it finishes and brings your whole look together. Can you use a setting powder as a finishing powder? You sure can. Um, and some people love some of that, as I said, to use as a setting. So you can intermix it. It's more of the, of the time and the step where you apply it and how you apply it that really makes the difference between it being a finishing powder with this nice flat brush buffed in or a setting powder applied strategically in order to keep makeup in place. I hope that helps a little bit. I hope it cleared up some questions for those of you who have always kind of wondered. For those of you who are already experts in this and you have some knowledge that you would like to share, definitely drop it down below. This is a community-wide video, not just for people with questions. I would love to hear what your favorite setting and finishing powders are. Let me know if this was helpful. So in the future, I have planned some other Beauty Basics videos on how to deal with expiration dates and when to throw a product away. And also I'm thinking about doing something on allergies, cosmetic allergies. Is it dryness that makes us itch and 
get rashes on our face? What commonly are we allergic to in products and how we can play detective and pinpoint what products are making us break out, et cetera. Kind of the detective work needed for skin allergies. I would love to hear what beauty basic series questions you have below, or if it's not a question, something that you hear a lot of confusion on, just a suggestion, that would be great as well, because I do hope to continue the series, and I really have a huge shout out and thank you to Deb for suggesting this to us today. Definitely leave your comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I sure hope that you did. Hey, if you haven't already done so, make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any more of this series and all the cool new things that we have coming up in the next few months. I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.